Hey guys. Okay, so we're going to be discussing third conjugation verbs. Now remember there are four conjugations. Actually, there's more like four and a half. There's first, second, third, third IO, and fourth. And it's really important that you learn the ins and outs of each of them as you progress in your Latin, especially in a really grammar-intensive program like ours. So already I'm sure some of you have had the thought, hang on, what's a conjugation again? And I'm glad, kind of, that you asked. I mean, it is the third one that we're learning, so hopefully this is the last time I've got to remind you. Now, conjugations are a way to keep different kinds of verbs organized. So think of conjugations like um, folders or drawers in a filing cabinet, maybe, for different kinds of verbs. We look at the pattern of the principal parts of a verb, particularly the infinitive, and based on that, we put the verb in one of the drawers. So, here we see a verb that it has a pattern o are in its first two principal parts. So, we're going to take that verb and we're going to put it in our first drawer, making it first conjugation. Then we see a second type of verb. This one has sedeo, sedere, o ere. That's a slightly different pattern. So we're gonna put that one in our second drawer, all right? And we're gonna keep doing that so on and so forth as we discover different verbs and their patterns. So maybe you're still lost and you're like, hang on, what do you mean ending in the infinitive? That was way too fast, I don't get it. That's okay. Let's look at what I mean by the ending of the infinitive and compare multiple conjugations. So let's compare first, second, and third conjugation verbs. And hopefully then, you'll see the pattern that appears. And once you, once you see that pattern, you'll easily be able to identify what conjugation a verb is. All right, now, um, verbs that are in first conjugation have are in the infinitive, A-R-E. Second conjugation has ere, and notice that long E right there. Third conjugation is ere, a, it has a short E in the infinitive, okay? So let's look at some examples. In first conjugation, we've got amo, amare, to love, laudo, laudare, to praise, and satio, satiare, to satisfy. The pattern here for first conjugation verbs is o, are. Second conjugation verbs, some examples are moneo, monere, to warn, habeo, habere, to have, and wideo, wideire, to see. So the pattern here is eo, eire. And again, notice that long e in the infinitive, the second principal part. Third conjugation, we've got ago, agare, to do or to act. Dico, dicre, to say. And duco, ducre, to lead. All right, notice the difference in pronunciation between second and third. We've got wideo, wideire. Third conjugation, duco, ducere. Habeo, habere. Dico, dicere. Moneo, monere. Ago, agere. All right. The pattern for third conjugation, of course, is o, ere. And it has a short e. Okay, let's look a little closer at the difference between second and third conjugation. All right. Second conjugation has a long e in the infinitive while third conjugation has a short e in the infinitive. So here are some stems of second conjugation verbs. Let's just go through them and see if you can finish the pattern. We've got ardeo, ardere, means to burn. Fleo, flere, to weep. Tokeo, tokere, to teach. Maneo, manere, to stay. Moeo, moere, to move. Debeo, debere, to ought to. Teneo, tenere, to hold. And wideo, dere, to see. Over in third conjugation, here are some stems. We've got bibo, bibere, to drink. Curro, curre, to run. Dico, dicere, to say. Duco, ducere, to lead. Lego, legere, to read, to choose. Mito, mitere, to send, bono, bonere, to put, and praho, 
trahere, to drag. All right? Make sure you understand the difference in the patterns. It's very, very important, and it will help you down the road because third conjugation is going to decline, or excuse me, conjugate differently. All right, so let's look at how third conjugation verbs conjugate in the present, imperfect, and future tenses. So here's an example of a third conjugation verb. We've got duco, ducere, duxi, ductum. All right, now, usually, You'll find your stem by chopping off the whole e, uh, the whole R E from the second principal part. But in third conjugation, you're gonna chop off the E R E. So for duco ducere, our stem is going to be duke. Again, for third conjugation, chop off the whole E R E. I know in first and second conjugation verbs you can get away with chopping off just the R E. Third, you do not want to do that. You're gonna be chopping off the whole E R E. So again, our stem is duke from duco ducere. Now let's look at present tense. I'm gonna copy down my stem in every single person and number. And then I need some endings. Now normally you'd add OST must to send Problem is if I do that, I get duco, dukes, duke, duke must, duke tis, duke, which sounds really weird, right? So we need a vowel in there. Now we're gonna get our vowels actually from these endings which you might recognize from the future tense endings for first and second conjugation bo bis bit bim is bit is bunt now we don't want that b we're going to chop that b off and then we're going to add everything that remains to our third conjugation stem giving us duco ducus ducat ducimus ducatus ducunt and that is how we're going to form our present tense for third conjugation. We're going to take bow bis bit and chop off the B. Now, imperfect is nice and easy. We just add on a long E and bomb bas bot, bomb bas bot, bot. Nice and easy. Future, though, we've got a new set of endings, and you're going to have to memorize these. It is what it is. Now, here's our stem. Our new endings are om, s, et. Emus etis ent. So you got ducam, I will lead. Duces, you will lead. Duket, he, she, it will lead. All right? Now, my way of remembering this, what I always thought of is A1 through E5, meaning in the first person singular, I'm going to write an A and then M. For second, third, and first person plural, I'm going to add an E. So there's one A that I write, A1 followed by five E's, and then I'm gonna add the present tense endings. That's all you do. So we got ducam, duques, duquet, duquemus, duquetis, duquent. Repeat it tons of times, write it out, find out your own way to memorize it, whatever it takes, but you need to get that in your head, all right? That wraps up third conjugation for now. Um, please email me if you have any questions at all, all right?